welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I get to do something which I absolutely love today, but I don't often get to do it on the channel. Today we're going to be doing a couple of pencil puzzles. Um, and this is to celebrate, well, it's basically to celebrate the fact that we had a submission from the, well, one of my favourite constructors, Shy. Uh, Shy is quite simply a genius. She is so creative and clever. I've done countless classic Sudokus on the channel by Shy in the past. Um, and Shy is one of the people who, who can construct classic Sudokus with unique tricks in them, literally new tricks that nobody has seen before. Um, it is a skill that is it, it's ridiculous. And anyway, Shy submitted a puzzle called um, Aquapelago which is a, a, a brand new type of puzzle, a type of puzzle invented by Walker Anderson, no less. Now, Walker Anderson will be familiar to anyone who knows the world puzzle scene. Walker is one of America's very best solvers, um, also a constructor of some note as well. I, I don't think I ever went to a world puzzle championship where I overlapped with Walker, um, but uh, he's a guy I would love to meet one day. Um, and he's, he's come up with a new rule set, um, I have read this rule set. I think I understand it. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to firstly have a go at an aquapelago that featured on the Discord server uh, recently. Uh, and it's by Menderbug. And then we're going to have a look at Shy's puzzle. Let me, um, let me show you Shy's puzzle here. Now, I am going to be solving in... Uh, in Sven's, uh, in our normal interface today. And that is purely because the puzzles are av available in the PEMPA interface, and that might be a better way of solving them because I think PEMPA, PEMPA can mark whether you've got it correct or not. Um, but if I use PEMPA uh, on my screen, I have to resize the window all the time, which I don't have to do in our normal interface. So I'm gonna be using our software. I'll put lots of links under, under the video. So in the video description, you can, you can decide how you would like to solve it. But let me talk to you for a moment about the Discord server, because every day on the Discord server, there are two wonderful presents that are given to the world. One of them is a genuinely approachable Sudoku. And this is, I think, the best way of learning how to do these variant Sudokus that we, we, we do on the channel every day. Um, if you're brand new to variant Sudoku, they seem daunting, but the genuinely approachable ones are intended to teach you. And they're not intended to take very long. I mean, you normally, I think the um, you know, the fastest solvers would, would do them in two or three minutes. Um, and even people who are new to them should only be taking maybe 10 minutes. So it's a great way to learn. But for the last few months, there's also been uh, a genuinely approachable pencil puzzle every day as well. And um, this puzzle, this Aquapelago, which is the one on screen by Menderberg, featured in that series. And what this does, again, it teaches you how to do pencil puzzles. So every day there's, there's a brand new variant for, for you to try. There's always an example puzzle and then there's a main puzzle. And the idea is that you try and beat the, the suggested times. And, and they're never very long times because the puzzles aren't intended to be difficult. They're intended to just make you think a bit about the puzzle and understand how it works. It's a fantastic idea. Um, in fact, on the gas, the gas puzzles, the Sudoku puzzles, we've released two apps now full of these puzzles and they're very popular with good reason. It's a great way of learning. Um, we should really do a pencil puzzle app, shouldn't we? That's something I don't know when, when, when the time would come that would allow us to do that, but it's certainly something that I am conscious we should do at some point. Um, anyway, all that said and done, ah, no, before, before we actually, I read you the rules of Aquapelago and we find out what Walker has invented. I have got, I have got announcements to do, so I should do those, shouldn't I? I'm going to start with some birthdays. So Bruno, I want to wish you a very happy 24th birthday today. I know it's your birthday because your partner Sonia wrote to us and said that you watch the channel a lot. And, and also said that you were very proud of your birth date. I'm not surprised, actually. I can understand because it, Bruno was born on the 9th of the 9th, 1999. Now, that, that is quite a cool date. I, have to, I, I, I give you that. And I hope, Bruno, today you're able to have a suitably large chocolate cake, maybe emblazoned with icing in the form of 1999. And you have a great day. Uh, but it's also Gavin's birthday today. And Gavin is 33. And I know this because your girlfriend, Lena, wrote to us, Gavin, 
over there in Cambridge, um, a city close to my heart. Apparently you watch every day. And um, it's also apparently this weekend, it is also your Fox Red Labrador Marla's birthday. Marla is turning two, not 33 though. So Gavin, I hope you have a brilliant day uh, too. And, uh, and Marla, I hope you have whatever the equivalent of chocolate cake is for dogs. I, I probably shouldn't guess. Uh, any other thing to mention is over on Patreon, we've got our Sudoku hunt running. Um, it's still got loads of time left. So if you are a patron, do check that out. Seven puzzles. It's called Lines and Shapes. There's a chance to win some new CTC merch. Do I have it? I do. There it is. The new cap, um, which is rather cool. Yes, I do think it is rather cool. Anyway, let's have a look at what Aquapelago is all about, uh, all about, and I will read you the rules. And and actually, I've also got here we go. I've got an example puzzle here. So once we've read the rules, I want to look at this puzzle to understand how Aquapelagos work because I've never solved one of these in my life. So shade some cells so that no two shaded cells are orthogonally adjacent and the remaining unshaded cells form one orthogonally connected area. No two by two area may be entirely unshaded. Okay, so I think I understand that. Just, just let me interrupt my train of thought there for a moment or my reading. Orthogonally connected is, um, or orthogonally adjacent, sounds complicated, it is no such thing, it's very simple. Two cells are orthogonally connected if they share an edge. So these two cells are orthogonally connected these two cells are not orthogonally connected. To make these part of an orthogonally connected group, we could simply make that one shaded as well, for example. Um, but I guess in this one, we can't have four unshaded. So that's what, that's, that's what I took from the instructions. Now, let's carry on reading. Um, clued cells must be shaded. Okay, that seems to be the case, doesn't it? Um, and indicate the number of shaded cells in the diagonally connected group they belong to. Now, let's just pause there and think about that. Right, so as I look at the answer to this puzzle, I can I think I can see how that works. So the two here, the two in the, in the black square, it does, it has a diagonally connected square, but it's only got one, hasn't it? Whereas the three has, is part of a group of three diagonally connected squares. Now, what I'm not sure about, I presume that means that if there was a clue here, I could write, could I write, could that have been a five, for example? Or maybe it would have to be in the black square, which is not going to show up. I don't know. This one could be a two. That would be a one, because that seems to be the diagonal groupings. That would be a one. That's what I think is going on. Um, Anyway, this puzzle on the screen is by Menderbug, which is a new name to me, but this is what we're going to have a go at. Now, I bet over on the Discord server, because this is uh, this is a one of the genuinely approachable pencil puzzles, there will be suggested times for this. So if you are minded to race, you could check out the times, or maybe if I remember, I'll try and f find them for you and put them under the video. Um, but let me have a go at this, and now I get to pay. Let's get cracking. I'm not going to race because that's not the idea of, of cracking the cryptic videos. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and explain what I'm thinking. So, and in doing that, I'm going to reread the rules because although I did read them, I don't think I took them in very well. Shade some cells so that no two. Okay, so no two shaded cells are orthogonally adjacent. So I think the first thing I would do would be to unshade, I'm going to have a colour for unshaded, which should probably be green, knowing me. So I'm going to make all of those cells unshaded. There we go. Because not, because according to the rules, none of these can be shaded. And right, and these, right, and the greens all have to be orthogonally connected. So that can't be grey. Because if that's grey, this is walling in these greens, which could never form an orthogonally connected group. Let's just look at that for a moment. If we put that as grey, you can see these are, these are sort of cul de sac off in their own little region. So I think that's green. And now I can see that's got to be grey, because otherwise that's going to be a two by two of green. So I think I think we're, that's the same here. That's got to be, we mustn't have a two by two. Ooh, and now we've got some sort of cross arrangement that looks like we could go in a variety of directions. But I can see something, which is that this six 
is definitely not part of a group of six diagonal cells at the moment and I think the only way it can grow is by is by grabbing that one and that's going to make the six part right I can see a couple of things now so this six is part of a group of four at the moment but this one can't be shaded or we're going to have we're going to hive off the cross. So that's got to be green, which means that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two. Ah, ah, right, okay. I've, I'm noticing all sorts of things now. One thing I'm seeing, which I hadn't seen, I'd seen that this couldn't be shaded, but actually that can't be shaded for two reasons. Firstly, if I did shade this, this green one is hived off. Secondly, it's I'm connecting a six clue to a five clue, which uh, you know implicitly cannot be true can it because that's this this five clue needs to be part of a diagonal sequence that adds up to five not six so that's definitely got to be green uh, that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two this can't be gray or this square would be hived off so that's green um okay and now i'm going to get stuck aren't i bobbins <laughs> uh, these you shouldn't really get stuck on these for very long i'm i'm not seeing anything quick so i'm going to revert to low hanging fruit which i can see at the bottom of the grid this four can't take this square or well, these are going to be hived off so that's got to be green therefore that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two and this right and this four has to grow and that's interesting because in growing it achieves its complete it's completely quarate now we have a quorum um, on uh, on on the four clue it's finished which i guess means every single possible diagonal connection to any of these cells has to be greened which seems that seems generous but i think that gives all of those as greens i've probably made a two by two now i hope i haven't um those two are now grey to avoid two by two. So I suppose every time you get a grey, you can greenify everything around it. It's a very eco-friendly puzzle. That's got to be grey to avoid a two by two. Ah, oh, this is lovely. Okay, so the five now, if you look at its corners, three of them are green. So that one's got to grow. And now in growing, <laughs> not a toenail, not an ingrowing toenail, that's got to be green. But now I can see we can't have a dice shape here. We can't have a, we can't make that grey because that's going to hive this off. So that has to be green. But now I've still only got four. So that's got to be grey and that's got to be the finish of that, that sequence. And we must orthogonally not have anything orthogonally connected to a grey cell that's also grey. Right. So now... Now what do we do? Oh, I see. Right, it was obvious. I could have done this before because if I made that grey, I'm connecting three more greys to this sequence of four. And that gives a count of seven. That's lovely. Right, so that's green. And now how does this grow? It's got to go there. And it can't grow to here or we're going to hive off green again. So that's got to be green. That's got to be green. That's got to be green. We still need another grey. So that's grey. That's green. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh, that I see. That's got to be green. And and, and now, oh, right now, um, because this is finished, those two have to be green, and that gives an opportunity for a grey here. That gives a grey here, and those two both need green connections. So I think that's how to do that puzzle. That's lovely. Uh, it's, it's very, this is exactly what these pencil puzzles are designed to do because you sort of, you get into a flow um, once and you learn about how the puzzle works, don't you? And that's, that's very much what I felt I was doing there. Now, I hope you can see that. It's a very, very, it's, a, it's something like um, a 21 by 11 grid, this. So it's, it's a slightly unusual size. I'm going to shift the window very slightly. Um, I'm anxious not to get this too, ro too wrong. Now, this is shy this time, so this is going to be presumably some sort of work of staggering genius. Uh, I have no idea how hard this is either. It's called solstices, which is a lovely word, um, and I don't, I don't know why it's called solstices. Uh, I'm trying to think about why it might be called solstices. I don't know. The rules are the same as the other puzzle. So let's, well, <laughs> let's just get cracking. Um, and again, I suppose what I have to do is to go around the grid and 
hive off everything that's connected to these squares. So let's do that to start and hopefully that will shed some light on the world. Okay, so we fill all of those in and now we stare at it. It's quite, it's quite small for me actually, this with my glasses. Um, hmm, okay, is this... Uh, I guess we start here, do we? I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not. Obviously, I'm not good enough at these to know to know whether two clues are particularly restricted. But I can see that this can't grow very much on its right side, um, because although I could shade this square, let me show you. I could shade that one. Now I can't shade this one, and I can't shade this one. I can't shade this one because I'd hive off a green, and I can't shade this one because it would connect the 22 to a 2 diagonally, and they can't be part of the same clue. So I don't think we know whether this is shaded or not, but we do know that in order to reach a count of 22 diagonals, I do have to shade that one, and therefore those two have to be green. And this has to grow quite a lot, and we can't hive off this green, so that's got to be, that's got to be green. And again, oh, okay. And again, I can't, I can't attach the twenty-two to a two, so that's got to be green. And now the only way this can go, this is lovely, isn't it? It's just going to get four. I see the twos are going to force the twenty-two never to hit them. So again, here and here, we can't. These must be green, or the two clue connects to the twenty-two clue. That's got to be green because otherwise we've got orthogonal connection. So this has got to be grey because this has got some substantial growth to do. And we can't run into the, the two clue diagonally. So both of these have to be green. That's got to grow. These two have to be green. That's given a two by two opportunity there. Which, oh right, now now this two clue can't connect to that one. So that, that forces that. And now I've got three corners of the two clue done. So that forces the two clue to be like that. And well, not only can I orthogonally mark these green, but every diagonal connected to that has to now be green as well. That gives me a two by two there, a two by two here. That's got to be green. I think I would find it. Oh, look, yeah. I mean, I am already finding it very easy to forget to, to do the... Um, to do the thingy things. Yes, that's the most descriptive sentence in, in, in Christendom, isn't it? I'm finding it difficult to do the thingy things. Um, okay. Oh, no. Now I'm stuck. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Possibly that one would be six. So this has got this has got astronomical amount of growth to do. Um, what do we do now? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Is this obvious? It probably... There's no requirement, is there? I was just wondering... No, I've, in the example puzzle, you can, and obviously in this puzzle too, you can, have, you can have sections of diagonals that don't connect to a given clue. So, ah, hang on, I've just noticed that that's a, that's a two by two. How long has that been there for? I don't know, but now the, both of these have to be green now. Uh, and now this two clue can't go in that direction or it will connect to the 22. Uh, so that, yeah, there's loads of opportunities to miss things with this puzzle, I think. So that's growing the two. And now again, I must completely um, stop this growing diagonally anymore. And now that square has, has uh, got to be green or we've got a two by two. So those two turn green. Oh, Right, and now somehow or other this 22, which used to be able to, I think it used to be able to grow to this square, but it can't anymore. So it has to grow there, and therefore that's got to be green. And now it can't, and oh, now it can't connect to that one. It's so clever, isn't it, the way this sort of is propagating. Now that's got to be grey, or we've got a two by two. Let's, let's divide that off. Um... Well, okay, I can see I can see this can grow to here, but it can't grow. Oh, in fact, it must grow. I was only at a two by two opportunity again. I was going to say it could grow one, but it can't grow two because then it would hit the two. But it does have to grow one to avoid a two by two. So we make that green. Have we got? Yeah, look, there's a connectivity point here. If I if I double click the greys, 
imagine that, well, there's two reasons actually. That can't be grey because it would connect to this. It can't be grey because it would hive off a green region and the top left of the grid. So that's got to be green. This two now can only grow in one direction. So that is the Harry Styles clue again. Um, and now let's just double click. Yeah, so this clue it can only grow here, can't it? That's its only opportunity. Ah, no. Well, no, that was right. That was right. And in connecting there, it does connect to this one, which does give it the opportunity to grow down here as well. But it didn't have that opportunity before we put in this square. So that is grey. OK, so let's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're on a count of eleven. And there's still another 11 to go to get to our 22, isn't there? So, how do we do this then? If we... I think there's a problem if this grows here, but I might be wrong. It's weird, actually, because I think there is a problem with that. But but at first blush, it doesn't look like there is. But because you have to sort of do diagonal movements, you actually, yeah, this can't be grey because you can't get this out, I don't think, because I could grow this to here. But if this is here and it's grey, you can't go anywhere from there. You can't go there, you'll hive this off. And you can't go here because you'll bump into this. That's just, that's just weird. That's very odd. So that has to grow there is what I'm going to contend, which gives me a load of greens again. Now, does that mean, for example, well, does that mean that has to be grey? Oh, no, it doesn't because no, it doesn't at all. No, it doesn't. That's total and utter nonsense. Uh, and I, I, I apologize for even uttering that nonsense. Yeah, because because we're, we're making diagonal movements, aren't we? So we could go through there. Or do we have to because of the sort? Is it sort of a... Oh, I see. Oh, that's weird as well. I hadn't realised that, but now I think about it, it must be true. This is... The 22 always goes to the same bishop's colour of square, doesn't it? It's like a chess checkerboard. And this... Um, so I was wondering whether these two squares could be on the 22's path. But look at that, they can't be because they're on they're the wrong bishop's colour. So I think the only way that the 22 is, which has got another is something like 11 more to get, so it can't just live in the bottom left of the grid. I think it's going to have to go through that square. Ah, but hang on, there's something else I've missed here that might be simpler, which is that this two can't grow. So both of those have to be green. Ah, and that gives me a two by two there, which means I've got to hive that off. And that means I've got a two by two there. And does that amount, I, I'm not sure now whether I've, I've just disproved or proved what I was saying before. <laughs> I have no idea. I, although I can see that's going to be hived off. Um, if it, if that, so that's a two by two we've got to avoid. So I've got to shade all these in. Now this can't be sh shaded or we've got a group of three. So that's, that's unshaded. This two needs to grow. So it has to go down into the corner. Ah, this is cool. This is a very clever puzzle, isn't it? That's got to be shaded to avoid a two by two. And now how does this 22 grow? I think it's only got one opportunity, which is there. I've got to greenify those. That's presumably two by two. I'm not sure what the 22 is up to now. That's got to be gray to avoid a two by two. That's got to be green. Uh, that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two. That's a, that, that is the new nori nori, isn't it? For today now how how much has this reached this has reached six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen right i'm going to write seventeen in there <laughs> um well it can't connect to the two we do know that two and seventeen are very different numbers so that's got to be how this two grows and now let's take advantage of the fact that this 
can't grow in, into any of its corner squares, which is presumably going to give us more two by twos. And it is, it's giving us loads of two by twos. I think if you got good at these, you could do these really fast, actually. Uh, that's got to be great to avoid a two by two. So those both turn uh, green immediately. Um, now, so is this, is this the same thing again? If that, if this grid two grows that way, let me, I'm just going to stare at this for a second. If that grows that way, now, in effect, all of these become unavailable, don't they? And you can't, yeah, you can't wiggle. You, the, 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 yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to fully greenify the effect of this square. Actually, that would be green as well. But the point is that this has to grow another five. So we could take that one, but you can't go anywhere from that because all it's, well, it could go there, but that would hide this off. So it doesn't work. Yeah, okay. All right. So there's a much bigger restriction that you, than you might at first appreciate to do with these clues. Now, both of those two green. Now, this time, I'm going to think about this. All of those turn green as a result. That has to be gray. All of these turn green. That's creating two by two opportunities. Don't hive off any squares. Two by two opportunities. Uh, that's going to give me another two by two opportunity. So look, that one's not got a clue. Uh, that one's not got a clue either. And the 17 has now grown. So by the time we get here, it's 19. So it's still not big enough. So it's got to grow here, I think. And therefore those turn green. That's got to be shaded to avoid a two by two. Those two have to be green. This is still not big enough. It's now on tw now, now, now we're getting into the territory where it's actually it's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So it is core eight now. We have found the full extent of the uh, of this 22 clue. So we have to stop it growing any further, which is going to give us a two by two here, a two by two there. Let's hive those off. Um, now this two can't grow into either of those squares or it will be a three. That's giving us another two by two. Um, this has got to grow. That's got to be green. Don't hive off the green in the corner. Jolly naughty. That's got to grow. That's got to be green. That's got to stop growing. That's got to be two by two inch. That's got to be green. That's got to be gray. That's got to be green. Um, okay, look, there's another little two by two opportunity here, which is going to do some magic i suspect because there's two clues now finished so that's got to stop that's got to stop which means that's two by twoed okay we're getting into this top area of the grid that's got to stop to avoid a two i've got to be no actually this can't hit that i thought that i thought there might be an opportunity for this two to hit this four which would obviously be wrong that's got to be gray that's got to be green this two has to grow so it has to go that way this time so those of those turn green sort of a, a hey a wacky type logic going on there uh, that's got to be gray so that's got to be green and okay hmm. so i'm now looking at i'm now looking at the top of the grid trying to work out what this means and i'm failing miserably uh, have we got some, <laughs> there's probably a whole load of two by twos that I can't see. Or is there a connectivity point? Hmm. Hmm. There's a, I'm going to mention this. I'm not sure if it, if it matters or not. But if that square there, if this square was green, then you can see that to avoid a two by two here, one of these has to be gray. And to avoid a two by two here, one of these have to be gray. But we also know that the two grays that therefore have to inhabit that two by two cannot be orthogonally adjacent. So there would be a diagonal relationship there or there. Well, that one can't happen because of that too. So you'd have to do that. And that's getting awfully close to penning in an area in this top right hand corner. Um, but, but that, 
mm, I can't see that. There's probably some sophisticated point there that we could we could have or I could have availed myself of. Um, but I couldn't quite see. In fact, oh, that's lovely. Right, there's a simpler point. If that's grey, I run into exactly that problem because of this. If that's grey, both of these have to be green. But then to avoid a two by two, I have to make that grey, and that's going to create a line of three. That's weird. That's weird logic. So now making that green makes this grey, and that makes this green. I don't know if that's is that doing anything. It might be. I, f I feel like we're, we're creating some sort of corral here that I'm going to have to be really careful about. Um, so perhaps can I visualize this if that's if that's gray? What am I doing then? I'm making this green. I'm making this and this green. I can't visualize what's wrong with that. If I make that gray, green, green, there's an awful lot of greens that get scattered around the place. Oh, mm, I have a feeling that's going to create a corral up here. I, I let, let me show you why. If that's gray, because I don't just get to put those greens in, do I? I get to put every diagonal cell around that is green. Yeah, it's, that's so beautiful, Shy. That is such a beautiful finish. And I could see it just about even with my limited, um, what's it called? Archi no, it's not archipelago, aquapelago knowledge. Yeah, you get this pattern. But of course, now I have to make that grey and I have to make this grey to avoid two by twos. And if I did that, look what's happened. I've got a grey, I've got a green area that's sort of become a lagoon in the top um, or a prairie in the in the top, a real corral. I can't get it connected. So that cannot be correct, which means that must be green. And this must be how the two grows. So that becomes gray. Now we, we grayify or greenify these and we stop it growing, which is, is going to give us a gray here. Those two now and now that has to be gray to avoid a two by two. And that's green and it finishes the other way. But you can see now we haven't impinged upon the connectivity of the greenliness. Ah, it's just brilliant. That's just brilliant. What a brilliant puzzle. A brilliant puzzle from Shy, and a brilliant first puzzle uh, that taught me how to solve Shy's puzzle by Menderbug. And they were extremely enjoyable. And that's a brand new type of puzzle invented by uh, Walker Anderson. So well done to Walker as well. I hope you enjoyed this. A bit of a a bit of a departure, but a very enjoyable one for me at least. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy these sorts of videos. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.